everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a really fun, sort of sentimental project for you today. I have a quilt that hangs in my studio that was made in 1894 and it's a crazy quilt and it's one of my very most favorite quilts because I love looking at all those stitches and all the work that goes into it. So we tried to replicate that using Creative Grid's Crazier 8 template and I'll show you how to do that but let's take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this fun? So what I did was I put, this is the block you're making right here, but I put four of them together and then I used all of my fancy stitches on my sewing machine to create the look of an old quilt. Of course, you don't have to do that. There's a zillion ways and things to do with this block, but that's what I did because I so love that quilt that hangs in my studio. So to make this quilt, what you're gonna need is one packet of 10 inch squares. And we have used this Kona cotton paint box by Elizabeth Hartman for Robert Kaufman. And this is a really vibrant line. This top, this top fabric doesn't do justice to really how vibrant this line is. You're gonna need a little sashing for ours, and that's for this border and the sashing strips that are in between. You're gonna need a yard, and we used black. Our binding is a half yard of the same black. Your backing on here is just a solid that we used and you're gonna need three and a half yards of whatever you choose to put on the back. So um, it's pretty fun to make this and it's pretty interesting when somebody comes up with a template that makes things easy. So why I was intrigued by this was because um, the template fits on a layer cake, which you know I'm all about the layer cakes. And so I'm gonna pull out some pieces here and I believe there are, let's see, on this template, there are one, two, three, four, five pieces. So I'm gonna pull out five different squares of fabric that will kind of look good together and kind of be mixed up. And, you know, we'll just get some different pieces in here. Let's see here. I'll get a darker green and a yellowy. Now, obviously you can put anything you want in here. I've kind of destroyed that poor layer cake. But um, I like to do it with five different pieces and I'm gonna stack them. So I'm gonna make, nope, that's just one. So I'm gonna stack them on top of each other and make sure they're lined up pretty good. Now these templates make, at the end of the day, they're gonna make an eight inch block. Uh, so you have a little bit of wiggle room. But when we start, here's how we're gonna lay them out. And the reason I'm doing five is because you wanna mix them all up. This will make a whole block. And so we're gonna put these together and let me look to make sure I got these on here right. It's good to have the directions to follow. So here's your A over here, oh, this way. A, and you can see we've got these little corners going in the corners and here's C in this corner and here's our B block right here. So this is how this is gonna look. Now, it would be very handy to have a rotating cutting mat, so I'm gonna go get mine. All right, so I've got my rotating mat here. I'm all set up. And to make things easier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take my ruler and I'm gonna cut these two pieces apart. So I'm just gonna cut right down here, just like this, like right between these two and just move them apart. And I've cut quite a few of these, so you know, you know I've like figured out the, the easiest way for me to do it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this piece up right here and I'm gonna make my one cut here, trim off my little end right here, trim up this edge over here. And then I'm gonna stack all these pieces right up here and keep them in the same order. So here's my D piece right here and I think I can move this piece. So on these pieces, you'll see some of them, you can move it right into the cut and then you only have to cut three sides. All right. So we're gonna cut over here and I'm gonna trim up this side right here and trim over here. Now, if your blade isn't very sharp, five is gonna be hard for you, for you to get to. So if you don't wanna cut five, what you wanna do is you just wanna cut a couple at a time and then what you're gonna do is just make stacks of these. So they'll go all in the same order but you're just gonna make stacks of them because they sew together just like they're put together. All right, so now I'm cutting this little one right here. So this is gonna go up here in the corner. Now this one's gonna come here. And let me cut this, move this one out of the way, 
cut off this little edge right here. This mat, this rotating mat is so handy for this kind of stuff. Now I'm cutting five because I want to show you the whole block, but you can, um, you can really cut however many you want. Don't, go, don't feel like you're stuck into doing what I'm doing. Just make sure that you're comfortable with what you're doing and All right, so here's our last piece, and let me go ahead and rebuild these for you on this mat where you can see them. So we've got all our pieces in here, like this. All right. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna start sewing together, and obviously we don't wanna start with the same pieces. So I'm just gonna rotate one of these pieces, and I'm gonna take these two top pieces right here, and you see from now on they're set to go together another color. And when I did this, what I did was I chain piece all the bottoms and, um, and then all the tops. So I'm just gonna grab these two stacks and we'll sew them right together just as they come off the, off the stack because I've mixed them up. So anyway, I'm gonna sew these together later because I wanna show you these blocks and I've got three going here. And so we're gonna start with these two up here. And again, I'm just gonna, this one I'm just gonna pull from the bottom and put over here with my top piece. And because you're sewing several different pieces of the top and of the bottom, all your squares are gonna be scrappy. Well, let, me just, let me just sew a couple of these. And this is fun to chain piece because you really do finish them really quick. One more here. Oh, not that guy. And then we'll put those over there. Oh, I put my top over here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. You can see I'm not being too picky about my color matching. Or I'm not too worried about it at all. Now on these last three, they get one more piece. So I'm gonna clip those off, clip these apart, and then I'm gonna open these up and sew my one more little side piece to them. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's different from the other two colors. Find a, this purple will go nice. I also love how well these things line up with each other. They line up very nicely. All right, now, as soon as I'm finished with this seam, I'm gonna press all these open because we're ready to put the two halves of our blocks together, but we want them to lay real nice. So we'll clip these open and I'm going to press these right here and I'm just going to make two piles. So I'm going to have the bottom half pile right here. There's my third. Here we go. And then this is my top half right here. And I'm just going to press so the seams all go the same direction. All right, so now when you look at these, you can see we just wanna make sure we have different fabrics. And so I'm gonna take this guy right here and put him with this yellow. See how that's gonna to go together? We're gonna to sew that center seam and we wanna make sure that all of these are different colors. So this is perfect because there's no other colors in here. We'll sew that seam across there. Now this one, it has the same green, and so I would actually leave that one and wait until I had another side to put with it so that it matched a little bit differently uh, so, that it was, it, so that it wasn't the same color. I'm kind of particular about the colors. I didn't want them to line up right with each other. So we'll finish up these two so you can see how it worked. here.
Alrighty, so then we've got this cute little crazy block right here. Let me press it open. And I'm going to press this one open. And you can see our little crazy block right here. Here's two of them. And so there's so many things that these can do. The way we set ours, uh, this is the first one I'd made. And so the way I set it was how my brain thought it. And I right away saw these little diamond pieces right here and put those together as a star. So what I did, I have a couple of blocks right here. And I just put them together like this as a star. And you can maybe see what I mean because of the star. These things right here form a little star. So here's that one and this one. So my quilt goes together four blocks like this that you make like a big four patch. So you have a block like this and you see that star in the center. So let's take a look at the quilt. Can you see the star? This is what I'm talking about right here. So there's a little star where it comes together in the center. Obviously, you don't have to set them like that. Don't be afraid to play with this and try some different things. And don't be really afraid to try all your different stitches. Now, when you plug in your stitch thing, you plug in those numbers and a stitch comes up, don't be afraid to grab a scrap of fabric and lengthen it or widen it or see what it looks like. You know, if you change it up a little bit, you have all those options on your sewing machine. If you're gonna have a machine with stitches, you're gonna have options to change up that stitch. And a lot of these, like I wanted them a little wider to really cover that whole seam, or I wanted, maybe the design was really tiny and I wanted to see it big. So don't be afraid if you decide to do the stitches on your quilt, because obviously this is gonna make a really great fun quilt just like this without the stitches. But if you decide to do the stitches, then don't be afraid to play with those and just mix them up and have fun with this because this is kind of a lost art. You know, it used to be in the old days when the women stitched on a quilt, it meant they had a little more extra time, you know, because the, they made quilts to keep people warm. But if they put fancy stitches on there, they were a little better off than somebody else because they had time on their hands to make things pretty. So I just love the idea of the crazy quilts. Uh, love this block. I love how simple it makes it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.